Eric, let me ask you this. Yeah. The business side sure. of BCW. Were you ever too engulfed into what was going on and did it almost kill your love for the business, especially with the way everything went down? It's a really good question, actually, because... Because you're still in it. and I'm you know, still in it. And, and, you're, you know, and you're working with Ricky and uh, Robert. Robert. Yeah, with Robert. This is what broke my heart about it. When I turned 18, they were going to make me part of the road crew. And I turned 18, it went up. I was going to do that. And that's when everything started to fall apart. What you have to understand is ECW got over more than anybody knows. They went into debt and they closed being owed somewhere in the neighborhood of $7 million because on demand, it was still viewer's choice at the time. Viewer's choice held them hostage. Once they found out that they lost the TNN deal, which the TNN deal was a joke, they gave ECW $25 million, forced them to run these bigger venues in these different towns they weren't ready to go to. They weren't even advertising them. Not one press release, not one commercial, except for during ECW. It wasn't even a commercial during Roller Jam. What In Demand did, and this is an insider story, I don't know if, if this has ever been told public, Viewer's Choice told Paul Heyman and Bob Arum, you're going to go under in a year, and if you don't, then we'll pay you. Once they lost the, the TNN deal, they were like, we'd much rather have to pay pennies on the dollar in bankruptcy court than we would have to pay you all this money. Bob Arum had the money to fight him, and Bob Arum won the loss. Paul Lee was trying to get a TV deal, and there was a deal worked out with Fox for Fox Sports because they were going to start going nationally with the Fox Sports chain. Because at that time, Fox Sports was Fox Sports East, Fox Sports West, Fox Sports South. And then they bought uh, MSG Network and Sunshine and all these other, you know, ancillary little sport uh, sports channel they bought. So that's how they got the Midwest and, you know, that Western area of the country. The I, know West this, area. I know there's truth to what you're saying because I used to work at the Cablevision facility in Bethpage and all the Fox sports channels were broadcast from there. Yeah. And, and all so, we used to come literally five minutes to air with the beta tape in hand, ready yeah. for them to uh, pop in the cassette. What they wanted Paul to do was do a five day a week, 30 minute serial, which that would have never worked. They would have been dead in six months. They would be filming these 30 minute shows. They would have taken away, and ECW was changing at the time, it was evolving. They still had a couple of uh, bloody hardcore matches and everything, but they were going more wrestling related. But it was it was a platform that they couldn't live on, so Fox wouldn't give them the deal. USA talked to them, but then USA said, "Well, if we can't have number one, why are we going to have number two? And he just he ran out of time. He ran out of time. He ran out of money. When Rob Van Dam was the biggest star in the world at that at that moment. Rob Van Dam was the hottest free agent in wrestling, and Rob Van Dam was floating ECW on his name value, and Rob Van Dam was gone for like four months because Paulie stopped paying him. So there was truth to what Paulie said on the rise and fall in ECW where he said that ECW went belly up because he couldn't get another network deal? Yes. That's the whole real story. Acclaim owed the money for the video game. And then they made the second video game, which became Legends of Wrestling. That was supposed to be the second ECW video game. Acclaim owed the money. Viewers' Choice owed the money. And then they just couldn't get a straight television deal. And that's what, that's what killed him. But then Shane wanted to bring him back in 2005. They were going to be the first original internet-only wrestling show. That was the original deal they tried to work out. Vince Six made that. And it was going to be Paulie running it. It was going to be all his own guys. It was going to be an internet wrestling television show. Because this is when Bite This was getting really good numbers. And Shane was like, well, we own this brand. Why don't we just do this with it? but they wouldn't let it happen. Did Paul E. lie to the guys? You A right. But everybody forgets, Paul E's a promoter. And promoters are full of There's a technical legal term for what that is. That's called bullshit. <laughs> well, it's like Find me one. It's like Find me enough. one. Well, we're waiting. When you're a wrestling promoter, Army you have promoter. to the boys. You have to the boys in order to keep it afloat. All the talent that came in that 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 was going to come in after that last arena show, 
the Backseat Boys were going to debut. Trent Acid and Johnny Cashmere. I was going to ask, my next question was going to be about the many promotions that came in the wake of ECW, such as Combat Zone Wrestling, Ring of Honor. Well, CZW was around already. And CZW they, they was doing their own thing. February of 99, yes. Yeah, they were doing their own thing. And and it was in New Jersey, and it worked for Zandig. He lived in Philly, so he would run Jersey. Jersey All Pro was kind of like a developmental area for ECW. Yes, like, because a they lot would, of ECW guys would do shows there, too. Yeah, they would do shows there, but Frank had a deal with Paul. And so if Paul wanted to see if some guys would work in ECW, they would have to come to Jersey All Pro. So the Haas brothers were there, uh, York and Matthews. Paulie's big vision was he was going to reinvent tag team wrestling at that time. That was going to be his next step in ECW was he was going to reinvent tag team wrestling. Well, he was going to bring in York and Matthews, which he did bring them in. Danny Dorian and Roadkill were still hot. Uh, they put together Simon Diamond and Johnny Swinger, and they were doing great. But they were going to bring in the Haas brothers, Charlie and Ross Haas. They were going to bring Nova and Frankie Kazarian. They were, that was going to be Frankie's first break in mm, at the I time. Uh, Michael Shane was debuting for the company, and he was doing certain shows. Christopher Daniels was debuting. And Christopher Daniels worked one of the last Elks Lodge shows, if you remember. Not the Dudley show, two shows before that, when they left the Elks Lodge originally, and then Bubba got him it for the return. If that's the case, I was there, and I don't remember him. Wow. Yeah, Christopher Daniels wrestled on that card. He wrestled on an arena show, so they were bringing him in. Loki, Prince Nana, Xavier, they were all going to debut for ECW. 